Hi, this is Dave Ship. I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to use Overbridge to connect your DigiTact to Logic Pro. And the way we're going to do this is going to allow you to have all eight sample tracks come through into Logic on their own track and also have the internal effects route through to another separate track. So first we need to make sure that the firmware on the DigiTact is up to date. To do this, go to electron.se, click on support, in the drop down, select DigiTact. Here you'll see the latest update. Download that and follow the instructions to install it. When you've done that, we also need to install Overbridge. So if you go back, in the same drop down, select Overbridge, and then download and install the Overbridge for Mac. Okay, so the first part of this tutorial is how you set up the DigiTact. So if with a project set up, you go into the cog for settings and you need to go down to system and into USB config. In there you want to make sure that you've got overbridge selected. I've currently got USB MIDI selected so when I select overbridge it unticks USB MIDI and now only overbridge will work over USB connection. You obviously need to have your USB connection plugged into your computer. The next thing you want to do is go into audio routing and in here this configures which tracks will go to the main output. So by default all eight sample tracks and the delay and the reverb will all go to the main output and the main output goes over overbridge along with each individual track. Um, we don't want that so with each individual track going through Overbridge, we don't need them to go to the main output. So if we untick all of them by just selecting each one, they go red as you unselect them. You can see now route to main says two out of 10, and those two are delay and reverb. And we can tick or untick those like so. So now nothing's going to main. We just want the delay and reverb to go to main. So. Let's re-enable those. We've also got send to FX and that is making sure that we have the right tracks being sent to the FX. So we have the delay being sent to the reverb and we have all eight sample tracks being sent as well and that's what we want. We don't need to worry about the others. Um, just a quick note on this, the USB to main DB. This isn't a adjustment for how loud the tracks are coming through Overbridge into your door. I know some people like, or some people have complained that the DigiTact is too quiet. Changing this won't affect that. This is the other way around. So the audio from your computer coming in through USB to the main input on the Electron, that allows you to change the level that that comes in at. We don't want to mess around with that. Okay. I think that's it for setting the DigiTact up, unless I've forgotten something. Okay, one quick thing to check before we go into Logic. Once you've installed Overbridge and have the DigiTact set up, um, Overbridge will show this icon here. If you click on it, you'll see the Overbridge engine, and you just want to check that the DigiTact is listed here. If it isn't, then follow the troubleshooting on the Electron website. For the second half of this tutorial, we'll set up Logic to use the Overbridge plugin. Uh, this will allow the DigiTact to have 10 separate channels in Logic, each of which will bring in a separate track from the DigiTact. It will also bring in the effects separately and the inputs on the DigiTact. So starting with pretty much a blank project, it's a completely new one and all I've done is added an audio track so you can hear me. Um, but that won't affect anything. So we need to add a software instrument track and we want to go down to AU Instruments, Electron, DigiTact and select Multi-Output 10x Stereo. So that's eight stereo tracks for each track on the DigiTact, one stereo track for the FX and the reverb and delay come in on the same channel. You can't separate them out unfortunately. And then there's one final stereo track, which is for the inputs, and you can treat them as an audio interface. Don't select multi-timbral 
Um, you might think that you want to add 10 parts for one of each of those tracks, but if you do that, every track will bring in all of the same audio, which is not what we want, so I don't tick that. So that's created a new instrument track with the Overbridge plugin loaded on it. Uh, I won't go into what you can do in here, but it's very powerful. It gives you all the same flexibility and features that you have on the device itself, and it allows you to automate parameters from within Logic. So we'll close that because we don't need to deal with that right now. And we'll open the mixer. In fact, I'm just going to rename this so that I don't lose track of it. So you can see we have a track for the DigiTac plugin and we have a corresponding channel with the plugin loaded on it. At the bottom of that channel is a plus sign. If you click on that until all of the other channels appear, you can see we have nine more AUX channels and that's one for each track on the DigiTact plus the stereo inputs. But these AUX tracks don't have a corresponding track in the main window. So we need to add some audio tracks that they will uh, be routed to. But before we do that, let's start by changing the outputs for these tracks. So if we select all of them, and then under the output section, we change it from stereo out to bus. And if you hold down alt when you click on bus one, then it will route each one to its own bus one through to nine. If you don't hold alt down, they'll all go to bus one. So you, you'd either have to do them individually or go back and make sure that you uh, hold down alt. That's created these extra orgs tracks that we don't need. So I'm just going to select them and delete them and select delete anyway. And then let's add some audio tracks. So click on the plus audio Audio input will start with bus one. Make sure ascending is ticked and we want nine audio tracks for each of these orgs. So type in nine there, click create. That's created audio two through to 10. Uh, it would be one through to nine, except for the uh, microphone audio track I have just so you can hear me. Um, and as you can see, if you look at the input line in the mi mixer, they've now been configured from bus one through to bus nine. So now, as long as I remember to select and monitor all of those, when I play each track on the DigiTact, you'll see that as well as coming through on the AUGS tracks in the mixer, they also come through on these audio tracks. And if I play an instrument plugged into the stereo inputs, which is just a little pocket operator, uh, you can see that will come through on the final track. So that's track 10. What that is, is the input left and input right on the DigiTact. Uh, they're normally used for sampling on the device and uh, quite nice actually. On the device, they would be summed to mono before sampling but with Overbridge, they stay as a stereo pair. Uh, you can treat these as an extra audio interface. So um, you can have Logic set up with whatever your normal audio interface is and still record in on that, which is what I'm doing currently with my microphone. But then in addition, that last track, that AUGS 9 and Audio 10 here, that allows you to have the inputs into your DigiTact act as an audio interface, and you can record that in parallel with recording on another interface. Um, it also is completely independent from the recording screen on the DigiTact, so you don't have to turn on input monitor in order to hear the audio through it. So now we've got these audio tracks, we can record arm them and just start recording the audio as it plays from the DigiTact with each track being separated out onto its own track in Logic. Um, but the final thing is that the FX are coming through still on this DigiTac plugin track. Uh, and as I mentioned, that is a MIDI track. So we need to do something to work around that. So let's just change the output from that to be another bus. 
so bus 10 in this case. That's again create an AUX channel that we don't need, so I'll delete that. And then if we go and add one more audio channel and set that to bus 10 as the input. So that's actually created it in quite a silly place, I would say, but right here we've got audio 11. And if I remember to turn on the monitoring for that, uh, so a snare has reverb and delay on it. And you can see when I hit the snare, the initial hit of the snare is coming through on the, um, the second audio track from the Digitact, which confusingly is now audio three. And then the reverb and the delay are both coming through Digitact plugin first, but then that's getting routed to audio 11. So what that means is I can now record arm all of these together. And if I do a quick recording for you, you can see that the audio from each track on the Digitact has gone on to its own separate track in Logic. We've not recorded anything down at the bottom for the external inputs because I didn't play anything through it. And the effects have come in on this track up here. A lot of people complain that the audio coming from the Digitact over Overbridge is too quiet. Um, and I understand why they say that. Typically, uh, if I play you, for example, the snare, that's peaking just under 20, minus 24, uh, which is too quiet, really. I would normally want to record all my levels set at about minus 12 and keep them at minus 12 as I'm adding plugins and before I start to do a mix. Um, but actually, the reason for that is that most of the sounds on the Digitact, by default anyway, are not at the full volume that they could be. So if, for example, the kick, I just turn up everything on it. So turn the level up, the volume and velocity and over um, the overdrive, and then play that to you. You can see now that that is peaking at just under minus 12, which is the maximum volume I'd want to see a peak coming in at. So actually, I think Electron have done the right thing here. They've made sure you've got plenty of headroom. Uh, you can make your sounds as loud as you want on the device, and you're never going to see it clipping as it comes into your door. But assuming you have sounds set up pretty similar to the defaults, you are going to find those levels are a bit low. So the way to counteract that is if you select, uh, well, if we just select one track first, um, and if we put a plug in on there, which is utility gain stereo. And then a good starting point is probably an extra 12 dBs of gain on that channel. Um, and you can then copy that across all of the other channels. So if you just hold down Alt and drag it, So now we've got the audio coming in through these org channels and they are being increased in gain by 12 dBs before being sent to the bus. So when the audio hits your audio tracks, that's going to be 12 dBs louder. So you might need to adjust this depending on how loud you set your sounds on the DigiTac, but that's a good starting point. And that just means that when you record the audio, it's coming in at a, a louder volume to start with. It's not really a problem. Um, there's no noise floor to speak of over the USB overbridge. So having the recordings come in low and then increasing the gain on the audio regions isn't a problem, but um, this just saves you having to do that. A couple of other things I like to do when I'm doing this. Um, so if I select all of the audio tracks for the DigiTact, in fact, all of the tracks, um, I like to change the icon and I've just got a custom icon loaded which is just the um, the faceplate for the Digitact and I like to have the track colours all set to be the same colour scheme as the device so that nice orange. 
that just helps me keep track of what everything is. Um, I would also go through and rename each of the tracks, which I'm just going to do quickly for you. I'll probably speed this up. Okay, so now it's a bit easier to tell what's what um, when you're looking at the tracks in Logic. Obviously, I've just used the default names for the tracks as they appear on the device, but as you repurpose them, maybe you use track ace eight for the baseline. Obviously, just name them what you want them to be. The other thing I like to do is create a summing stack. So if you select all of the tracks that are for the sample tracks, so excluding FX and the DigiTact inputs, right click and do create track stack and select summing stack. That groups them all together and I'll just call that drum bus. And what that means is now all the audio from these tracks, whether you're recording and listening to it or whether you're playing back audio regions, will route through this summing stack channel, which means you can control the volume of them all together. You can add plugins that will affect everything. Um, it just helps to keep it as a cohesive device, even though you're multi-track recording it. Um, what I'll often do is start like this, and then as I start to use tracks on the DigiTac that are maybe not drums, so often eight will be my bass. Um, I might have some vocal chops on one of the tracks, uh, maybe a lead synth. I will drag them out of that summing stack so that they're not on the drum bus and they can either be an independent track on their own. So let's pretend that's the bass now. Just drag it out. Uh, you, sometimes you need to drag it away from the stack so that it knows it's out of it. Um, so now the drum bus doesn't have all of the diggy tack tracks in it anymore. Your bass is out there and you could add that to a different summing stack if you want. Well, I hope that's been helpful. Hopefully that gives you a comprehensive run through of how to set your audio routing up so you can do multi-track recording. I think this is the best way to use Overbridge. It's probably not the easiest door to get it set up in. I think people have an easier time in things like Ableton. Um, but once you know what you're doing with it, you can set this up once, save a template, and you don't need to worry about it every time you start a new project. Um, but it does become like second nature. I'd also recommend setting your project to um, 48k as the, um, the sample rate because that's the internal sample rate for the DigiTact. It will work with other sample rates, um, but that way you're just not having any conversions or anything. You get the best quality audio when you're recording and you can always change it after you've recorded if you want. Thank you for sticking with me all this time. Uh, it's taken a little bit longer to describe than I expected. Anyway, I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching.